السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from our evils of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides will never be left astray And whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves it. And do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasin li amri wa ahlul uqtata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jum'a Mubarak to uh, everyone. It is a, a pleasure and a honor to be here and to, to speak with you all today. Inshallah, the topic that we are discussing in our khutbah today is the topic of on community or community in general. So last week I had the opportunity to speak with a community member in a chaplaincy setting. And, uh, you know, we've been able to talk about various different issues that that were coming up. And this person was particularly struggling with community um, with respect to not in the sense of trying to find community, but with respect to kind of being burnt out by community, overstimulated in a sense that, uh, you know, they were feeling more attracted to kind of just doing their own thing or being, uh, you know, isolated is a kind of a heavy term, but just kind of being on their own for a little bit and 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 kind of balancing that out with respect to not just, you know, being fully inundated in the community, but having a space for themselves. Uh, but the people around them were very kind of gung ho about, no, the only way to kind of, you know, uh, live faithfully with your religion, with your faith, uh, especially if you're near a Muslim community is to be in that community and to be consistent in that community and involved. And, uh, you know, this was someone that's also struggling with their faith. So when they're kind of being told that this is the way that you'll be able to improve your faith, and this is the only way you'll be able to truly connect with your faith and, you know, stay with your dean uh, is through community, uh, it kind of puts them in a tight position because they, they're struggling with their faith and they want to be a part of a community, but they also just have a natural predisposition to kind of want their own time and, and just be on their own for a little bit. And it was told to them to, to the degree of a hadith that is used uh, with respect to the concept of ijma or consensus. But the end of the hadith says the, the hand of Allah is over the jama'ah or the united Muslim community. And that, that's the, that community is the only option in that aspect of providing a space for uh, one to connect with their faith if they're struggling. It's the only way um, to kind of complete, in a sense, one's experience in Islam. And so there's no doubting the be benefits of a community. And this is what was told to them. This was, you know, there's no doubting the benefits of a community and having community. But what I would like to expand on and think about is that if the hand of Allah is over the community, is over the united community. I, I, I would hardly, I would hardly dis argue to say that if the hand of Allah is over the community, it has to be under and holding those who are lonely and isolated, and those who genuinely seek connection to Allah but might not have the same access to community as other folks or the same experiences with community that other people have, uh, or even uh, the same realities in a sense where they may have been harmed or may have had some trauma related to community or may have been burnt out or burned by individual persons of the community. And so there's complex realities to this, but to look at that, uh, to, to see this, not just the hadith in a fuller sense, but to take a look at this concept that uh, Allah is not just with uh, the united community. Allah is also with those who are in the individual. As Allah tells us, you know, I am nearer to you than, than your jugular vein. That remember me, I'll remember you. And call upon me, I'll respond to you. That there's a very individual relationship there as well, especially for those who are struggling. That if Allah's hand is over the community, Allah's hand must be under those who are struggling for it. And so, as I mentioned, community looks different for everyone. 
And what we aspire to is a community that needs to be dynamic. It does not need to be static. It doesn't need to be that same community that just gathers Fridays at the masjid and is just like a, it becomes hollowed out in a sense that this is just what that community does. And if you don't partake in it um, based off of what the structural concepts of or the structural uh, existences of this community are, then you are not part of the community. No, the community needs to be dynamic. And sometimes the best community is that which gives people their space, but stays connected, stays in touch with them, but it still respects their boundaries, respects their space. It doesn't assume certain things about them. It doesn't cast them to be a villain if they don't participate. It, it, it uplifts them. And the best uh, community, the best friends, as our prophet taught in a hadith, that the best community, the best friends that one can have, the best companions that one can have, are those who consistently remind you of Allah and whose speech uh, gives you knowledge. So people who are beneficial to you, people who remind you of Allah. And when we think about Allah, when we remember Allah, we start all of our uh, recitations, we start the chapters, we start the reading of the Quran, we start every action with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We invoke the name of Allah of mercy, of compassion. And the first and foremost thing is that are the friends that we interact with, are the communities that we interact with, are they ones who invoke or em emanate this aspect of mercy and compassion? Or is it something else that's being there? So remembering that the best community, the best of these friends, are those that walk in that spirit of mercy, walk in that spirit of compassion, and it emanates and, and, and kind of brings us in in that sense. But as I mentioned, that community looks different for everyone. So I asked this person, I said that, you know, let's, let's take a step back. Um, tell me about what an ideal community is to you. What does that look like for you? You know, if you were to uh, have your choice in this, what would that look like? And this person responded and said that my ideal community would just be one person, one person who I could trust, who I could uh, contact with, who I could share my faith experiences with, uh, but one person who can kind of walk alongside me, um, who could maybe connect me to other spaces if I needed, but um, for the bulk of my time when I'm, when I'm just on my own, having just one other person uh, if I needed to uh, connect to a form of community or if I just needed someone else, that one person would be considered an ideal community for me. Um, and, and so thinking about that, you know, how and, but but when 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 they had mentioned this to when when they had uh, when they had said this to me as well, not only was I curious about the one person, but they also mentioned how they felt that this was just incompatible with our normative version of what community is, especially in the Muslim community where we say, no, the community is, you know, big. We have an expansive version of what community looks like. We see, you know, we visualize many people all around and together um, and how we try to maybe push it on people that this uh, a community can't just be one other person that's incompatible with community. And whether that is from an Islamic standpoint or from a cultural standpoint or from a societal standpoint, we oftentimes don't see community as just one other person and you know as i mentioned that number stuck in my head one like that one other person and that was this person's community that was what this person saw and visualized and wanted as an ideal version of the community and then i remembered that this isn't something isolated or abnormal from our tradition from the islamic faith at all this is something that was part and parcel of our tradition this is something that's not an aberration and this is something that's not incompatible at all you know, as we mentioned that uh, the hand of Allah is over the community, the hand of Allah uh, over the community that's united, and the hand of Allah as well is under the community that is the individuals of the community that are lonely, holding those that are struggling, um, particularly those with respect to their faith and on, on their faith journeys uh, and, the, and, and, and working with their relationship to Islam. And so when we think about this in a sense that uh, if Allah is with the community gathered together and, and thinking about the metaphor of when you hold your hand over something, when you have your hand over something, you're kind of just guiding it and watching it through. You're, it, it, it's moving. It's, it's kind of, it's, it has its own agency. It's there, uh, but it's moving of its own accord. You're kind of just, you know, safeguarding it in a sense. So you can think of like a cloud providing some shade. You can just think of someone just watching over somebody and just kind of protecting them. You see someone uh, just walking along somebody, they know how 
this, this child is going to be walking. They just have their hand kind of slightly over it. And, you know, eventually that child will be walking. But then you have the other aspect of it. So that's the protective aspect of community that when Allah's community, when the community of Muslims is united, that Allah's hand is over them in that sense, in that metaphorical sense that Allah is, is with that community because that community is doing what things are right and is moving in the right direction. And Allah's hand is guiding it um, just as a as a form of cover, providing that shade, providing um, that assurance that Allah has not left. But with those who are struggling with their faith, with those who are uh, in, in the isolated space, with those who are lonely, who are you know yearning to connect with Allah, but may not be able to connect directly with the community or have a community, Allah is with them every step of the way in there. Allah is, 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 is not only holding them, Allah is there walking, holding that hand, walking step by step in that space. And uh, as we see in this sense, it's not uh, a it's not just a mystical attribute. It's not just a uh, mystical saying. It's a really lived and real uh, re experience grounded in reality for uh, those who are foremost in our tradition. I lift up two, inshallah, in this example. So I want us to remember that when Musa alayhi salam was called, that he was someone who was with his family at the time he was you know maybe minding his own business uh, other you know traditions or you know biblical narrative has him you know herding sheep whatever it may have been he was just tending to his own things he was he was, he was taking care of the affairs of his home um and you know when 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 he was interacted with in this in this divine moment that when he was called to his duty when he was given this revelation that given this task of a lifetime um you know it, it was out of the blue it was away from his family he was he, he had to leave his family there. He was given this task. He was told, go to Pharaoh, go to Pharaoh, demand the uh, freedom of your people and uh, demand the kind of like preach the message of Allah, the message of the one God, you know, go and, and carry out this task. And, and you can think of this that you have an individual who's kind of like a rural farmer, not even that, someone who is just on the margins. He is, uh, he's just minding his own business. Now he's got to go to Capitol Hill, or now he's got to go to the president or the tyrant or whoever it is in government, uh, and he has to go preach this message. So just thinking about the the, the sociopolitical difference in this space as well, the, the dynamic that's occurred. But this is the task that is given to Musa. It's not like, hey, just go tell your neighbor to stop doing something. It's go to the person that is causing all this, the the head of the state, and go demand um, this this freedom. Go go take, carry out this task, and and think of a task as I said of this the, a scale a ta uh, the scale of a task like this um, in our present moment and in our society uh, in our recent history. You know, social movements need to be organized. Mass demonstrations are organized to bring voice against a tyrant or to bring light to an issue or to protest against the policies of a government. Uh, official or government body or government in general. Uh, but just think about that this was, and, and oftentimes they may not be successful. And, and this was just Musa that was told. It wasn't just, hey, Musa and you know family or Musa and all these other people, this is the task that we're going to need. It was called on just Musa. But who was Musa's community at that time? What, what Thinking about what community did he need? You know, he wasn't in that sense when he was called upon in this sense you know, it wasn't as, as I mentioned, as a whole community, it was just Musa. Uh, but what was the community for him in this task? What was his community on this interaction and this encounter, this intersection with faith? You know, Musa's first reaction was not something that we see as a, we, we often romanticize it as a, uh, you know, this, yes, you know, I'll go, you know, we're, we're going to go into uh, take, uh, take on Pharaoh and do all this. It wasn't an immediate or romanticized yes. He gave some. He gave a supplication. He gave a du'a. He gave a prayer, um, and he he kind of had a doubt in himself. He the, the stemmed from a doubt that lifting up his own speech impediment, asking to you know open the knot of his tongue, to uh, open the knot of his heart, to to help him in his in his space, to help him speak, but then also ask for a helper from his family, and he specifically named him Harun, my 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 brother Harun, who would help him. Um, and, and he could, you know, he could have asked for a whole nation, he could have asked for his whole family, but he specifically asked for a soul helper, one person, and uh, that was his brother, and his community for him in this space, his community was his brother, his family, for this specific task that he had asked just for that one person, and for Musa in that space, struggling with this how to kind of reconcile what what has just been bestowed he's just a humble uh, shepherd on the side of the hill and now he's got to go uh to you know the 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 epicenter of oppression to to the to the very tyrant um in whose home he was raised uh who was bringing upon all this 
you know, uh, the, this negativity was bringing upon all this oppression to his people. And now he has to go and take on this person. And he his his form of community, his ideal community in that sense, uh, immediately comes to mind his brother. Um, and by extension, we don't want to reduce the role his family played, the role his wife played. Um, Oftentimes these get left out in the narratives, but you know, his family, his wife having to support his children, having to support his family that's there. So not to reduce that in any means, but for him in that immediate sense, community was not, I need a whole nation or a whole support group of people before I can go there. He said, I just need, I need a helper. So give me a helper from my family. And Allah bestowed that. And uh, conversely for our prophet, Remember when our prophet was called, he was beginning to withdraw from community. He was isolating from the noise. He was retreat, uh, retreating deep into the mountains of Mecca. And when revelation and the message of Islam came to him, he was startled. He was frightened. Again, he's going away from community. He was someone who for much of his life spent it in community, especially in the last 15 years before this. He was you know, very much involved in the community. He was, he was a business uh, person. He was a merchant. He was you know, a trades person selling in this, in this space. And so uh, conducting the business of his wife, Khadija. So he was very involved with the community in this sense. And people knew him. They didn't think of him as a hermit or someone on the outside. They knew of him as a sadiq and al amin the trustworthy, the honest, the, the person who they can count on, they can rely on. And there's so many traditions showing how he was an embedded part of that community, but a, a notable part of that community. We have the example of him signing uh, the Hilful Fudul, or at least taking part in the Hilful Fudul of um, the, the pact of chivalry, in a sense, of, of this pre-Islamic pact of chivalry that defended the rights of those who are uh, outside the community. And so coming in that sense, but also you see him in the story of the Black Stone, being a part and parcel of that community, helping to build that community literally brick by brick. And so now you have a space where he's kind of gotten to a place where he's like, ah, man, I'm not connecting with this community. There's just, I just need to get away from this noise. I, I'm, I'm withdrawing to the space, whatever the reason was. He withdraws to a space. And if you've been to Umrah, if you've been to Hajj, you know that uh, Jabal Nur or Ghar e Hira, uh, where it is, is not uh, just down the street from the Kaaba. It is quite a bit a ways away and a way up uh, to get there. So it's definitely a space away from there. Um, but when, as I mentioned, when revelation and the message of Islam came to the process of, he was startled, you know, he was frightened. He didn't go back to that wider community that knew him as a Sadiq and al -Amin, the people who he could trust, the people who didn't have anything but positive things to say about him. He couldn't, he didn't even go back to his whole tribe. Again, this is a tribalistic society. Your matters, your affairs are the affairs of the people around. And so, you know, he didn't go back to that wider community for support or for help immediately. He went to uh, that community. He went to that community that was at his home. He went to his wife, Khadija. He went to his, back to his family. His community in that sense, in that moment of need, was one person, Khadija. And she gave him the best support a community could and should give and should give, inshallah, in the future. She uplifted him. She comforted him. She supported him. She didn't put him down. She didn't doubt him. She, she met him where he was. And she connected him. Then she, after, after providing the services that she did, she then connected him to a resource, her cousin, Waraka, who could help him process and understand the experience. And later on, the more formal aspect of community came that we know today, the Ummah came. But that Ummah started out just like this, one-on-one. -on -one. That first person that believed in the Prophet ﷺ, that first person that comforted him and assured him. And it shows us in our role as a community whether we are on the giving side, like Khadija, whether we're on the receiving side, seeking it, like the Prophet we, uh, we're, we're looking for a community that meets us where we are. But we're looking for a community that also helps connect us to maybe where we need to go or where what is best for us. Sometimes our community cannot provide every single thing for us, but our, a responsible, good community can help connect people, recognizing where it can't help anymore, but can help someone get to the next stage where they may be helped. So before we try and impose community on someone, let us reflect and let us ask. Have we asked that person, what is their ideal version of community? Have we asked that person their version of community? What kind of community do they need? What kind of community are they looking for? What, what is community to them? What does it mean to them? And more importantly, asking ourselves, asking ourselves, what kind of community is it that we're offering? What is the intentionality 
behind our community that we're offering or that we're trying to get someone to go into? Is it a prophetic individual needs based community that's responsive to these needs, welcoming community, beloved community? Or is it a community that is concerned with other things or other agendas? with fundraising, with, you know, certain things of, uh, we need, we need you as a, uh, as a stepping stone to a, a greater objective. What is the purpose of our community? Are we there for this per these individuals and, and for these people and the substance of the people itself, or are we for something else that is a different intention? Allah tells us that we as a community, we as Muslims were the best community created and raised for the good of humanity, for the service of humanity, to enjoin in what's right, to forbid what is wrong. And sometimes what's right is in that giving those people the space and establishing that right community. What does that community look like? And sometimes forbidding it is also forbidding when that community becomes too much, when that community begins to harm, when that community loses sight of the individual and the needs of each of the individuals that are there. Our identity is in our community as Muslims. We see it in this verse that uh, Allah says that, you know, you as Muslims were raised for the, the good of humanity. You're the best community. So immediately as Muslims, you are a community. You, it's, it's, it's synonymous with us that you are just one of the same in that sense. You're not just a Muslim without a community. You as Muslims were born into a wider community. So it's part of our nature. It's in, innate to us here. But our experiences can and will be unique. So let us leave here, inshallah, asking ourselves, what kind of community do we seek individually? And what kind of community do we seek to offer to others? And where does that kind of come from? So let us reflect on that uh, as we ask ourselves and as we aspire to create a community that meets and is what everyone individually in their own experiences seeks. That community is not a static thing. Community is not something that is a two-dimensional thing. Community is very immersive. Community meets people where they are. Community understands the nuances of where people are. It's not a cookie cutter uh, type of an organization or a setup. It's a place that anybody can and does feel welcome. The Prophet's Masjid is a beautiful example. The Masjid served not just the purposes of prayer and the, the, the times of Salah. The Masjid was a place of learning. The Masjid served during times of war as a uh, medical uh, medical camp, as a, as a clinic for those who are, uh, who are wounded. It served as a refugee shelter for the Ahl al-Sufa, uh, including Abu Huraira. It includes all these people. Um, that it, it was a place for all these people. The Muslim community in the Prophet's time was a place for all these people, who, whether women, children, everybody could find a space. And we want to ask ourselves, what kind of community are we offering? What kind of community can we provide if we aren't offering it? So may Allah keep and guide the community of Muslims. May Allah's hand continue to be over the community of Muslims and uh, to the united community to guide our Muslims to become a truly united community, that that hand steers us towards true unity, to provide the appropriate community that each person in this ummah requires and needs, and to allow us as Muslims to be the best facilitators of community or the best seekers of community, whether that's in a mass community or in the individual relationships, like Khadija did to our Prophet ﷺ, or like Harun did to Musa, or like our Prophet ﷺ did for seeking just individual community with Khadija, or like Musa did in seeking that individual community with Harun and his family, and allow us to have a strong, trusted community, whether it be just one single person or whether it is an entire nation that we may further be connected to Allah. We ask this all uh, in Allah's name, that Allah guide us to the path, guide us all to the path of righteousness, to the straight path, the path of those whom you bestowed your favor, and not of those who've incurred your displeasure. Wa akhru wa da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Jazakla khair. Again, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuhu. A blessed Jummah to you all, and a blessed weekend to come. Assalamu alaikum.